1. So I've been in this game for a while, and my experience with the lady last night is definitely on my wall of fame. I didn't know whether to feel bad because she actually seemed mentally unwell. Anyway, she came in and asked for a table for two outside. Mind you, the sun is down and it's in the 40s. I greet her and get her drink order. Then I take her food order and she goes to hand me the two menus back. She looks to the empty seat and asks, And for you? I looked at her a little confused and she just laughed. Weird, but whatever. Then as I'm walking back inside, she yells, Excuse me? And asks for a straw. Sure thing, I turn back around and hear, Excuse me? She wants another tea. Yes, ma'am. I turn back around and get a third, Excuse me? She needs another water. By the time I make the drinks, I turned around and she was moving inside because it was cold out there. Less walking for me, cool. Except she left all her drinks and whatnot outside. I ran out and grabbed them for her and put the plate across from her and she stops me and asks me to move it slightly to the right, directly across from her. Then it starts to escalate very quickly. She set the extra drinks up in a place setting, and when the food came, she put a slice of pizza on the plate and started reading aloud from a journal she had been writing in. It's not the first time I've seen people do stuff like this, but the talking to an empty seat was a little weird. She ate her slice and then the other slice off the plate opposite her, then asked me to remove the extra setting, one item at a time. She then got up, walked to the bathroom, and stopped me to ask if it was in fact the bathroom. She was probably in there for close to 10 minutes before she came out and walked up to her expo and told him the bathroom needed cleaning. This lady had taken all of the cleaning supplies, trash cans, plungers, etc. out of the bathroom stalls and placed them in the hallway blocking the bathroom door. She went as far as emptying the trash and placing the full bag in the hallway. Oh, and then filled an entire toilet full of toilet paper. WTF! At this point, I dropped off the check and a box for her while she's aimlessly wandering around the restaurant chatting people up. She cornered a co-worker and told him about her future husband, Jesus, and her poetry and so on. And then I see her walk over to our expo window which has garnishing herbs and cheese out, cough all over it, and then pick up a big block of parmesan cheese and a grater and start going to town grating it right onto the floor. I ran over and told her she needed to stop because it was a health code violation. And she had just touched everything in the bathroom as she said, Oh! And handed me the cheese that I promptly threw away. She then started playing in the container of chopped basil. I did my best patient server voice and again told her she needed to stop and get away from the window. And she asked me why all this stuff was there then. I explained it was a health code issue and now I had to throw the whole container away. And she responded, Oh, well, then throw it away. And stuck her hand in every other herb there and walked away. She continued wandering around the restaurant, touching everything and tried to wander behind the bar. After harassing the kitchen staff for a while, she finally did a lap and said goodbye to everyone. And my server mode kicked in because I knew she hadn't paid her bill yet. She packs up her stuff and stands up and starts walking toward our side door. I ran over and grabbed the check, chasing after, calling loudly for her. She made it out the door and a couple steps away when she turned around and acknowledged me, and I asked her to please come back in and pay for her food. The lady turns around, walks back inside and slowly walks across the entire restaurant and out the front door, while I'm walking right behind her. She walked about halfway down the patio while I was following her and calling her, before I finally lost it and yelled, Ma'am, I know you can hear me. She turned around and said, Wow, you're so patient. Trying not to fully lose it, I got her back inside and paid. What the fuck? The whole time I was waiting for her to say, April Fools, and it never happened. I don't know if it was pranked, or an actual crazy person was running around wreaking havoc for an hour. 2. To set the stage, I am working at a cheap restaurant chain where we offer table service and a drive through It's your typical Friday night and things are going about as good as they can. I am the head server and I think there was one other adult server that's been there for a while. And then three or four teen girls. The one we want to remember is a special snowflake that we'll call Karen. 
Karen thinks she's better and smarter than everyone else because she's taking college classes in high school. She didn't believe me when I told her I graduated high school with a 4.6 weighted GPA. She is a real, entitled, elitist piece of work. Manager tonight is a very nice middle-aged lady who either was currently, or was before working there, a registered nurse. We'll call her Barb. Back of the house has a whole slew of people working, including a guy around the same age as me, early to mid-twenties, that we'll call Joe. Joe apparently had a medical condition as a kid similar to epilepsy, where he would get random seizures. He's for the most part grown out of it, but every once in a while he'll get a short, mild seizure. When he was hired, he told all the managers about his condition, and what to do if it happens. 1. Don't move the body other than to turn the person on their side to make sure they don't choke. Moving a person having a seizure can seriously harm them. 2. He requested that no one calls 911 unless the seizure lasts more than 5 minutes, or is a more serious one, I think it's called a grand mal. Joe and his family don't have a lot of money, and in the US, even if someone else calls an ambulance for you, you have to pay the thousands of dollars for it. Not to mention the cost of the hospital stay. Simple, right? Apparently no. Also, no one else knew about this condition until this night. The tale. So night is going the usual. Busy, tiring, etc. I'm at the server station, which has a full view of the drive through area, via an opening in the wall made for faster moving from the kitchen to dining and dishroom areas. Well, all of a sudden, the other drive through people are screaming for Barb. Apparently Joe had a seizure. Barb checked on him, told them to hold the drive through until it's over, and then continued to watch Joe. I continue on in the dining room, as there's nothing I can or should do about this. The other adult server is concerned like myself, but also understands that there's nothing she can do, and so minds her own business. Karen, on the other hand, freaks out. An approximate retelling of what I can remember. So, like, no one is going to move him? No, that could hurt him. We need to call 911. Well, Barb is a registered nurse, so I'm sure that she knows what she's doing. Also, Joe doesn't have a lot of money. Going to the hospital in an ambulance could bankrupt him. At this time, I had no knowledge of what he had told them upon being hired. Well, I can't just believe that no one is doing anything! Well, Barb would never intentionally hurt any of us. She's doing what she knows is best. I walk away and do my job. In about a minute or two, Joe comes too. He goes to sit in the office and call his mom. Back of the house goes back to being normal. The person that was at the window when this happened and saw it happened still has the gall to demand to speak to the manager because they had to wait for their food. This event also backed up all milkshake orders as Joe had been blocking the machine, despite telling people inside that one of our milkshake people just had a seizure. Many still complained with, Well, that's not my problem. You shouldn't hire disabled people then. Ugh, whatever. But that wasn't the worst of it. The worst was Karen. Joe actually came out of the office after composing himself and tried to talk to her and apologize for scaring her but that he's okay, and that Barb only did what he had told her to do. Don't worry, I wasn't in any real danger, etc. Karen refuses to calm down. She keeps going on about how she doesn't feel safe here anymore. During this time, Joe's mom comes to pick him up. She talks with Barb. She thanks Barb for not calling an ambulance, and that they'll just go to see his doctor tomorrow. A much smaller bill than a hospital ER. Karen sees all of this from the server station. She still will not calm the fuck down. She is insistent that we should have moved Joe and called 911. Even though she's essentially been told twice by now, by Joe and his own mother, that both of those things would have been wrong in this situation. Eventually, I see her standing at the service station doing nothing, just looking at the dining room with a nasty, sour look on her face. I know exactly what's going on. She's pissed that we didn't do what she wanted and that she was wrong. Her customers have empty drinks and no food despite it sitting in the window and pass bar. Hey, what are you doing? Your customers need service. Oh no, I'm doing my side work and going home. What? You weren't cut from the floor and your customers still need servers. Do your job. No, I mean I'm leaving because I don't feel safe here. Well then, if you're quitting, you need to leave the floor and go wait in the back because you're making the customers mad by seeing you stand there and ignoring them. No, I don't feel safe going back there because if I had an accident, you would all ignore me. You know that's not what happened. 
If you don't want to work here, then you can't be in the server station as its employees only. Just leave. Well, I just don't feel safe, so I'm waiting for my parents. I give up and go tell Barb. She rolls her eyes and transfers Karen's tables to me and goes out to tell her that she doesn't have to do her side work, but she won't be able to collect the tips from the last tables because she refused service. Karen says something rude to her and stands in the lobby. I clean up the clusterfuck of a mess she just left us in. Her customers were very happy to see me take care of them, and I made sure to tell them that their server has decided to quit. Karen's parents come, and they yell at Barb for like half an hour. Barb is an angel through it all. She just stood there quietly and let the bitch of a mother chew her out about proper protocols. Karen is standing behind her with a shit-eating grin. Well, now I knew how she grew to be such an absolute twat. Whenever she didn't get her way, she called Mommy and Daddy to do her dirty work. Barb didn't bother trying to explain anything to anyone, because she knew she had a written statement from Joe and his mom, so any calls to corporate that this blowhard was threatening her wouldn't stick. They all finally leave and the other adult server and I feel bad for Barb, but happy now that they don't have to deal with Karen anymore as she was a horrible server, for obvious reasons. After all that, the GM rehired Karen, much to our dismay, a few months later. Surprise, surprise, when she didn't get her way about something. I think it was an argument over side work. She had another hissy fit. If I recall correctly, Barb was her manager that night, and I think the only reason Karen was arguing was because she thought that she would win again. Only now, she was an adult. This time when she said, I'm leaving, Barb replied, Okay, well, you have to leave the premises now as you're an adult and trespassing. You can wait for your parents in the parking lot. You cannot come back to this store for any reason. Have a nice day. Karen was absolutely astonished now that her being an adult meant she couldn't play the whole I don't feel safe card anymore. I never saw her again after that, and I bet she was an absolute joy to all of her professors in college. To this day, this story is why I refuse to call out behavior of others unless the group it affects is actually mad about it. People are able to speak for themselves, and so it is just as bad to come to the rescue for someone who doesn't want it, or ask for it, as it is to be an ass to them. 3. To set the stage, I currently work for a bagel shop with multiple locations throughout the states. I initially started out as a seasonal worker, doing mostly summers between college semesters. I graduated with my bachelor's in music business in 2017, and after deciding starting close to home would be the wisest decision. Unfortunately and understandably, jobs within my field that offered the opportunity for advancement and networking aren't that plentiful in upstate New York. I returned to the store as a full-time employee. I could go on about how liberally this term is used at my store now, but that's a story in and of itself. Working in food service, less and less shit actually ends up surprising you. Still, there's always that one customer who somehow finds a way. That being said, let's get into it. The first encounter happened on my day off, so I relied on a co-worker and friend to fill in the blanks. It was a morning shift, and the crew was busy being located close to the expressway towards the downtown area of my city. People will come to grab half dozens and full, sometimes multiple dozens for the office every day. On top of that, we also have a drive through so there isn't exactly a lack of work to be doing. On this morning, my general manager, GM from here, was running the DT. And up pulls the star of this story, we'll call him Madman or MM. He was your typical dress shirt wearing middle-aged man. He had ordered a sandwich and some additional bagels. Okay, GM begins to catch MM out. We're in the middle of a rush, so it takes about five minutes to get his stuff out. After slowly going through the contents of his order, he knocks on the window. Got the sandwich wrong, try it again. GM isn't the type to let someone walk over her, but she smiles, says she'll be back, and goes to make the sandwich herself. There was nothing wrong with it. But she makes a new one from scratch, returns to the window, apologizes as she gives M.M. the food, and begins to close the window. He's already shaking his head. Again? Really? It's just a salmon sandwich with mayo. Do it again? At this point, GM realizes what she's dealing with. Sir, I assure you, this is what you ordered. 
I made the sandwich myself and we have a line behind you. If you'd like to come inside and have someone make it in front of you, we'd be happy to oblige. I'm going to need you to pull around, though. M.M. replies in an overly combative tone. Are you serious? I come here every week and this happens. This is unacceptable. Just remake it. For full context, this was the first time anyone recalls seeing him at the store. GM is half dumbfounded, half irritated, but doesn't break character, and goes to make the sandwich. Again. As she shuts the window, she hears M.M. mutter, Guess I'll just hire anyone as a manager. Take three. And he's more indignant than ever. I don't feel comfortable repeating what was allegedly said here, but there was apparently a good sprinkling of a word beginning with the letter R thrown in. Before he can really lay into her, GM calmly but firmly cuts him off. Sir, you've been here for eight minutes, there are ten people behind you, and I have a store to run. I can comp your meal today, but regardless of whether I or anyone else on my staff is making your sandwich, I will not allow you to speak to anyone here like this. I'm afraid I will have to ask you to take your business elsewhere in the future. M.M. looks like a balding tomato at this point. What's your name? GM gives him her name. This is the worst service I've ever received. I didn't want to do this, but you've left me no choice. M.M. takes his food and finally speeds off. A half hour later, a cop car pulls into the parking lot. A male officer gets out, walks into the store and asks to speak to GM. Guys, M.M. actually called the cops on the store for verbal harassment and intimidation. Long story short, GM explained her end of the story and the cop laughs, rolling his eyes. He assures her that he believes her account and that this isn't the first time this subhuman has made a report like this. He gets back into his car, drives off, and the rest is history. The crazy thing is that M.M. actually had the gall to come back, this time while I was working. That is another story. 4. I used to work at a popular burger restaurant, and on this day I had just started working there a month earlier. I was cleaning some tables, then I saw a family of three walk in. This caught my attention because the little girl had a rainbow dash jacket on, and I thought it was adorable. So I struck up a conversation with her and her parents for about half a minute before it happened. The entire restaurant, and keep in mind there's a normal seating area that's pretty big, and a bar for adults, went quiet while this old lady stood up in her seat and began yelling as loud as she possibly could. I remember passing her table moments ago and hearing her say, I'm not happy. Well now, clearly she really wasn't happy. Because she was pulling out every cuss word possible at her family. Keep in mind that there were little children at the table with her. After her loud tirade and insulting her family, she stormed off. The restaurant was still quiet for an extra minute before the guests started having conversations with their respective tables. I'm assuming everyone was talking about what just went down. And then I remembered that I had my phone in my pocket and forgot to record the whole thing. That disappointed me. Ah well. 5. So on Sunday night everything is going well. I'm making good money and I'm busy but I'm not weeded. I've got a 12 top and a 2 top and they are pleasant people happily chowing on some seafood. All of a sudden I'm sat at a table of 4 boys all looking to be 18 to 24. One of which I know was 24 because he showed me his ID. Right off the bat I already feel weird about this table. They reeked of pot and were constantly talking in a hushed tone and bursting out laughing. But I'm not one to judge. But they looked just like they couldn't afford what they were about to order, which I'm about to get to. I get their drinks and one of the guys orders beer, whatever. I ask if they're ready and they start ordering. One orders a sirloin in regular size and a salad. Another orders the same thing. One of these sirloin meals is about $17 each. So far I'm thinking, okay, this is pretty normal. Then I move on to the next guy and he gets a New York strip and some upgraded size and another beer. He's about $37 deep just by himself, which is okay. The last guy's order, though, pretty much gives it away that they probably weren't going to hang around to pay for it. This last guy orders a New York strip, plus rock lobster, one pound of crab legs, two orders of shrimp scampi, and all upgraded sides. $70 worth of food just to himself. 
I start telling servers around me to keep an eye on this table, and if they start to leave to come get me immediately. The food comes out and they're eating, still acting really sketchy. You know when someone's talking about you and then you get closer and they all just stop talking? That's what was happening when I'd come around the table, and when I'd walk away they would laugh really loud. Anyway, I was out getting drinks at the bar and my friend and co-worker comes looking for me and tells me that one of them is leaving. I hurry the fuck up with what I'm doing and go back to the table, and sure enough two of them at this point are gone. I look around and see that one of them is out smoking a cigarette, but I decide I need to drop the check off and get boxes now. I tell my friend that she needs to grab our manager and make sure these guys don't leave without paying. Unfortunately, my manager is not a very smooth person. She came over to the table and made it absolutely and painfully obvious that she thinks they're going to walk out. One of the guys even says, Why, you think we're going to leave? When she asks, are you all on one check, getting ready to pay, like WTF? My face instantly got red and apparently when I went to grab something for another table, she stayed in the room and stared straight at them. I come back a few minutes later and ask if they're ready for me yet, and the guy who ordered three entrees to himself says, Not quite yet. The other two guys come back from wherever they went and the guy that ordered the beers and New York Strip is sitting there ripping up coasters, napkins, etc. One of the guys asks, Dude, what are you doing? And he replies, I'm making a mess. <laughs> he then looks up at me and asks, You thought we were going to leave you? I obviously said no and he goes, Yeah, you did. I leave the table and my friend tells me they are gone, but I knew my manager was up front waiting for them. She comes back to the kitchen with the book and tells me that they were definitely going to leave with the book and everything if she wasn't standing there. I got five dollars on two hundred and that's just because they didn't want to wait for me to grab their change. Also they left me a huge mess on purpose, I'm talking biscuits stomped on the ground, ripped napkins, paper, coasters, salad dumped on the floor, etc. I hope they know it's the poor busser who has to clean that up. I felt pretty bad, so I stayed and helped him clean it all up, but seriously. Y'all are grown-ass men acting like 12-year-olds. The guy who ripped up all the shit was 24. Why do people go out to restaurants if they can't afford it? Why would you actually plan to dine and dash and then leave a huge mess just because you got caught? WTF is wrong with people. At least my manager was very proud of me. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates number 41. Well, as I record this right now, I don't know if this video is going to be four or five stories. I've never done one of these with just four in it before, but it would still be about the usual length. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I can find a fifth, because I don't like to put about five in each of them. I did have two others, but I had to kind of, after thinking, yeah, they were okay initially, when recording them, I suddenly realized, whoa, there's a lot more cursing in this than I realized. And um, I don't mind cursing in stories, I've been quite clear about that. But you've got to keep it to a minimum, you know, it's, uh, especially here on YouTube. Uh, you've got to make sure the videos remain as friendly as possible, and that's kind of my goal. Ah, well, okay, with that I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.